Hello, welcome to the channel Why Stories. Enjoy watching. Sounds, drifting somewhere far beneath a thick layer of mist, began to take shape. It was possible to distinguish voices of people conversing nearby and the noise of life support machines. Hands and legs still didn't respond. Opening her eyes seemed an impossibly heavy task, but Aglaya had already started breathing on her own. She remembered her first conscious breath, as if emerging from the depths of the sea. The doctor opened the door to her ward, glanced at Aglaya quickly, and, assuring himself that she was still in a coma, called someone in the corridor. You can come in, everything's the same for now. Aglaya's husband, Roberto, entered the room, followed by a graceful blonde. They looked at Aglaya for a few seconds, as if waiting for signs of life. Nothing happened. She lay motionless, surrounded by tubes and devices, as she had been for the past two weeks. Doctor, is there any hope at all? The blonde asked the doctor. I don't want to make predictions. It's a severe case, he shrugged. How terrible, the girl said monotonously. Well, stay until 6 p.m. if you want. After that, you'll have to leave the hospital, the doctor said matter-of-factly and closed the door behind him. Aglaya tried her best to move a finger to signal her husband that she was awake. But her finger wouldn't cooperate. The sounds became more distinct, and Aglaya unintentionally overheard their conversation. I don't think she'll make it, a female voice said. It's too early to talk about that. The surgery was complex. We need to wait at least three weeks, a male voice replied. Roberto, it's already been two weeks, and she's still a vegetable. Look at her. Maybe you're right, the male voice agreed. Darling, I'm always right. Through the throbbing headache, Aglaya opened her eyes slightly, but she couldn't make out anything. Who was this girl? Why was she calling her husband darling? You'll definitely get her apartment, the blonde stated. You have no children, and she has no relatives left. So, can I start moving my things in with you? Looks like it. Roberto replied cheerfully. Great. I always wanted to change the wallpaper in your living room. It's so gloomy. When you become the hostess, you can do whatever you want. Will you even let me throw away all her photographs? The blonde playfully asked. Of course. Why do we need them? Oh, she moved. The girl exclaimed. Did you notice? Aglaya pretended to continue lying motionless, pretending not to hear anything. She was curious about what her husband had been up to while she was in the hospital. Now, it seemed, she would find out who she had been living with all these years. No, you imagined it, Roberto gruffly nudged his wife's arm. It didn't move. See, she's still out of it. Are you entitled to any money? The blonde tried to find out what else they would inherit. Yes, everything we've earned together, plus her property. And how much is there? Not that much, Roberto estimated in his mind. She had some savings for her business. What kind of business could she have? The girl giggled. Seriously? She did nails at home and dreamed of opening a salon. So, she saved up about a million. Maybe a little more. What a businesswoman. I think I'll put her money to better use. How about we spend the winter in Italy? Sounds absolutely wonderful. Roberto embraced the blonde and pressed her against the wall right next to his wife's bed. Aglaya was boiling with indignation, holding back tears. She longed to stand up right now and reprimand both her husband and this girl. But she couldn't even move properly. I'm so happy, Roberto. Me too. Honestly, I'm tired of deceiving her and sneaking off to see you. I'm tired of it too. I want a normal family. We will have the best family. Aglaya heard the sound of a kiss. Wait, what do we do if she suddenly wakes up? The blonde asked Aglaya's husband. Then we'll figure it out. Right now, it doesn't seem like that will happen. Right. Let's not dwell on the negative. Hey. Are we really going to sit here until the evening? Tiredness crept into Roberto's voice. 
We can go to your place and break in your bed. Excellent idea. Why didn't I think of that? They both laughed and left the room. Aglaya opened her eyes. Before her was a white ceiling with a small chandelier, and she thanked God that she could see everything clearly. Her legs were still heavy, but her fingers on her hands were already starting to move. There was an emergency call button next to the bed. Aglaya could reach it if she tried hard enough. You scoundrel. They went to break in our bed. She croaked and was glad that her voice was gradually returning too. Millimeter by millimeter, she began to feel her body again. It hurt, and it made it clear that she wouldn't be getting up anytime soon. As she felt her leg, Aglaya realized that it was in a cast. Everything that had happened in the last few months had simply been erased from her memory. Why was she lying here? What happened to her? One thing she knew for sure, she was going to get revenge on her husband and his mistress. The hospital was crowded that day, and the rooms were filled to the brim. The unfortunate coincidence of the flu epidemic and icy roads had everyone sent to one hospital. In the corridor, the voices of adults, the cries, and the tears of babies could be heard. Aglaya was grateful to be able to hear it all. Try moving your leg, the nurse said patiently. For several days, Aglaya had been trying to sit and stand on her own, although it was very difficult. She howled in pain every time the nurse asked her to move her joint. I can't, she said tearfully. Let's massage it and try again. Like this. Is it better now? Oh. Aglaya managed to squeeze out, feeling a strong burning sensation. Yes, a little better now. Now the other leg, she slowly swung her left leg and immediately regretted it. It felt like medieval torture. She leaned back on the pillow. Can I take a little break? We just started. Aglaya, we need to try a bit more. I can't take it anymore. Let's do it tomorrow. No, just a little more, and then I'll let you go. Come on. The nurse helped Aglaya to get up and put her feet on the table. And now we'll try to stand up. This definitely won't work. Aglaya was frightened. We'll do it little by little. Start with your right leg. Now lean on me, the nurse offered her shoulder, but a sharp pain pierced both legs, and Aglaya screamed and fell back onto the bed. I can't do it. She protested, continuing to cry from the pain. All right, that's enough for today. Let's rest. The nurse squatted by the bed. She massaged Aglaya's hands as prescribed by the doctor. That's it for today. And now you'll have a massage. Is there any point to all of this? Aglaya asked doomed. Tell me, will I be able to walk? If you work hard, the nurse looked away. So, unlikely? I've gotten many people back on their feet here. And I'll get you back on yours, although your case is more complicated. How so? You had a serious injury. You were hit by a car, fell into a deep ditch, and they didn't find you right away. It's a miracle you survived at all. The driver fled the scene, and if it hadn't been for a passerby, you know yourself. Time was ticking. Can you ask a doctor, can you prescribe me some pills? My leg bothers me a lot at night. Actually, it's not allowed. Or an injection. I need to sleep, Aglaya made a pitiful face. All right, you can rest tonight. Don't abuse painkillers. It's very dangerous. Your body can handle it on its own, you understand? On my own, you mean? Aglaya looked out the window. She longed to go for a walk. After all, it was the height of spring outside. Even more, she wanted to know what her husband and his mistress were up to. They hadn't visited her in so long. Since she regained consciousness, her husband only came once to congratulate her. He brought flowers and pretended to be happy. It was so disgusting that Aglaya pretended to be tired and asked him to leave. What should she do now? Definitely get a divorce. But how could she manage her personal life in this condition? Let's try to stand up again, requested Aglaya. The nurse looked at her with astonishment. Again? Yes. 
I want to stand up and walk. Let's not overdo it. That's enough for today. Then I'll do it myself. Aglaya tried to rise from the bed, and the nurse supported her. Just a bit more, like this. There you go. You're standing on your own. Aglaya squeezed the nurse's hands tightly in pain, but she didn't show it. Let's go back. No need for more, you're doing great. Now, will you help me stand on my feet? Now I'm sure that we'll make it work. I have only one request. If my husband comes, tell him not to visit me. Why? The nurse looked at Aglaya in surprise. I'd rather not, Aglaya stumbled, unsure how to describe the situation better. In short, I'm begging you. All right, I'll inform the doctor. Now you need to rest. I'll open the window. Look at the sunshine. Aglaya sat with her legs hanging and stared at one point. The nurse understood that something had happened between her and her husband, and it bothered her almost as much as her injury. Aglaya, can I help you with anything else? No, thank you. You're already too kind. If you need anything, I'll always help. The nurse smiled and left to attend to other tasks. Aglaya looked sadly at her legs. Is there any hope? The last thing she wanted was to be confined to a wheelchair and be left without her husband. She recalled the voice of the young mistress, but couldn't remember her appearance. Casting a casual glance in the mirror, Aglaya was taken aback. An exhausted woman was looking back at her. Terrible, disheveled hair, grown roots, bags under her eyes, and a tear-streaked face, all of it added years and concealed her once attractive features. Was everything lost forever? Aglaya fell back onto the pillow and burst into tears. Even at night, by candlelight, the apartment felt uncomfortable. Roberto's young mistress, Inez, always felt the presence of his ex-wife here. Despite Aglaya waking up and recovering, Inez referred to her as the ex-wife. The news of Aglaya regaining consciousness caught the couple during a romantic evening when they had dinner, lounged in bed, and pondered how best to handle the dying wife's money. The doctors say we can take her home, Roberto said thoughtfully. So soon? Ina sighed and pouted. It's been three weeks. She can sit up on the bed and eat. There's no point in keeping her there. Why do we need her here? Inez lay her head on her beloved's shoulder. Maybe there are special facilities for her? She's disabled, after all. She's not so disabled that they'd admit her there. Have you found out? No, but... Well, I will find out. I don't want her living here. Inez, this is her apartment. Her apartment? Didn't you buy it together in marriage? No, it's only her property. She lived here with her parents since childhood. What a surprise. So, what were you saying? Inez raised her eyebrows disapprovingly. I thought she wouldn't come back. Roberto poured wine into a glass and drank it all at once. This is very bad news. So, now we won't be able to get any money or living space. Not yet. But we need it right now. I'm pregnant. What? Roberto almost spilled the wine in confusion. Are you serious? Would I joke about that? Now do you understand how much I don't like that we won't be able to live together? All right. I'll divorce her. And what? Her money will still stay with her. Inez continued to pout and even tried to force a tear. Don't worry, my love. The main thing is that you and I will raise our little one together. The child needs a father, not an occasional uncle. You're not listening to me at all. Inez stood up and crossed her arms over her chest. From the expression on her face, Roberto learned to anticipate an upcoming argument. I don't want to live in a rented room with a friend anymore. I have a man, and soon I'll have a child from him. Why should I live like this? Resolve this matter already. Show some initiative, please. What should I do then? You don't want me to kill her, do you? Why not? Inez turned to Roberto and gently caressed his cheek. There won't be a more fitting moment. Do it for me, darling. 
Are you out of your mind? He pushed her hand away. And why not? After the trauma she had, the doctor didn't know if she'd survive or not. She barely regained consciousness and hasn't fully recovered yet. Who knows what might happen? That's a crime, you know? Roberto blushed with indignation. It's an opportunity for us to get rid of her once and for all. She doesn't need much right now. Just give her a little knock on the head and she'll end up back in a coma at least. You're saying horrible things, Inez. I don't want to hear any more of this. Aglaya may interfere with our family happiness, but she's not such a terrible person to be killed outright. And how would I even do it? Sneak into her hospital room and hit her with a hammer? That's something out of a movie. It doesn't happen in real life. Then I'll do it, Inez said confidently, and her eyes sparkled, making Roberto scared. Don't you dare. Fine, I'll do it myself. We'll plan it together. Inez knelt down beside him. Everything will be completely safe. I'll come up with an alibi for you, and no one will suspect us at all. I don't like any of this. Oh, how I dislike it. Roberto covered his head with his hands and sighed heavily. Think about the baby, my love. That's the most important thing for us. By the way, she's still having trouble walking, right? Seems like it. The last thing I heard from the doctor was that she'll need extensive rehabilitation just to stand on her own feet. Roberto poured himself another glass of wine, but he didn't feel any hint of intoxication. He wanted to drown his thoughts in alcohol right now, but it wasn't helping. What if she got up at night, tried to walk to the bathroom, fell, and hit her head on the tiles? In her condition, it could be deadly, Inez looked at Roberto with a predatory smile. It sounds plausible. But how do I explain what I was doing in the hospital? He said doubtfully. Simple. You came to visit your wife, that's it. You'll go to see her in the evening, about 15 minutes before visiting hours end. You'll hit her on the head, drag her body into the bathtub, and then calmly go home. Do you think the doctors won't notice anything? You'll say she fell asleep and asked not to be disturbed. Besides, the doctors will be happy to forget about her for a while. They have plenty of other things to deal with. You watch too many detective shows, dear. In reality, no one cares about anyone. You should be writing detective novels. Roberto smiled and kissed Inez on the nose. So, will you do it? I don't even know. You promised me, Inez pouted again. Yes, yes, I promised. She was right about something. Roberto promised her an apartment to live together, a strong family. He shrugged and nodded. I'll do anything for you, he said quietly. The flowers in the vase withered. Petals fell, but Aglaya couldn't approach to remove them. Despite two weeks of rehabilitation, she still couldn't walk. Her maximum progress was standing up with the help of a nurse and staying on her feet for at least ten seconds. Her legs still hurt, muscles cramped, and joints burned like fire. You have a visitor, the nurse announced, quietly entering the ward. Who is it? It's your husband. He came to check on you. I asked not to let him in. Aglaya turned her head towards the window. I'm not feeling well. Aglaya, it's not my business, but you'll have to go back home soon. And now, more than ever, it's crucial that someone takes care of you. Aglaya remained silent. She understood that. She wouldn't wish this situation on anyone, being dependent on a man who betrayed her and possibly continues to cheat with some other girl. But there was no way out. Aglaya had no relatives or children. Her friends would probably not want to deal with her. She turned and tried to get up. Call him in, she said softly. Roberto entered with a bouquet of lilies. For some reason, he avoided eye contact, hugged the wall, and spoke with a fawning tone. Aglaya found it suspicious. Could it be that he came to make amends? How are you here? Roberto mumbled. Not bad, much better now. And how about you? I miss you. 
Here are some flowers. Put them in a vase. Roberto timidly placed the bouquet on the table near the vase and approached his wife. For the first time, he briefly looked into her eyes. She smiled. Do you have something to tell me? Aglaya hinted. Could it be that he ended things with his mistress and came to apologize? No, what are you talking about? Roberto continued to gaze intently at his wife. Everything is fine at home. Yes, the house is waiting for you. I've prepared everything there. Roberto approached the door, made sure no one was in the corridor, and firmly closed the door. You'll be discharged soon. Don't worry. I'll have a lot to do at home, Aglaya sighed and pointed to her legs. I understand. It's not easy for you now, Roberto pretended to sympathize with his wife. Are you really ready to see me at home like this? I like you no matter what. Roberto closed the window and drew the curtains. It's getting chilly in here. I'll close it. I wanted to ask you something. Anything, of course. While I was in a coma, what were you doing? Aglaya carefully watched her husband's reaction. He paused for a moment. Working, visiting my parents. Nothing unusual, really. Nothing else happened? Are you sure? Absolutely nothing worth mentioning now. Roberto surveyed the room, looking for something heavy to strike just once and be sure. I'll be honest with you, Roberto, Aglaya said with sadness. I know you have a lover. What? Where did you suddenly get that idea? I don't have anyone. The vase should do. It's heavy enough. Roberto walked towards it and picked it up. It was weighty. It just seemed that way to me. Don't make up things. We've been married for so many years, and you still get jealous. Roberto, enough. Tell me the truth, are you still with her? Aglaya, Roberto sat down next to her on the bed, considering from which side it would be best to strike. I only need you. Believe me. All right, I believe you. Aglaya let out a relieved sigh and turned her back to her husband to adjust the pillow. Roberto swung the vase, but suddenly the door opened and the nurse stuck her head in. Visiting hours are almost over. I need you to leave now. Roberto slammed the vase onto the table with such a loud noise that both women flinched. Already? Fine, I'm leaving, he spat out. The nurse had barely stepped away from the door when he rushed out of the room and ran downstairs. A week passed. Finally, this day has come, Aglaya thought as she wheeled her wheelchair into her apartment. She was fed up with hospital walls, the hospital's rules, and, most of all, the terrible food. Right now, all she wanted was to lie in her own bed, prepare a home-cooked meal, and change into her favorite clothes. Roberto struggled with the wheelchair, trying to get it into the corridor. Should we leave it on this landing? Who's going to steal it? I don't think anyone will, Aglaya agreed with her husband. Then I won't bother with it, he closed the door. Can you walk with crutches? Only around the apartment, Aglaya shouted from the living room. She was inspecting every corner she had missed so much. All right, I need to go to work. What? Are you leaving? I took a few hours off just to pick you up. Haven't you switched to remote work? No, of course not. Roberto was surprised. I'll be back in the evening and bring something to eat. You know I won't be able to stand up on my own, right? You have crutches. Won't that help? Roberto, I don't have the strength to stand up with them. Aglaya sat on the couch where her husband left her. If I need to go to the bathroom now, I won't be able to do it myself. Half of my muscles don't work. I'm sorry, I didn't know that. That's easy for you to say, you didn't know. Aglaya exclaimed indignantly. And what am I supposed to do now? Sit on this couch until evening, waiting for you to bring food? I don't know what you should do, Roberto replied harshly. I only promised to pick you up and bring you home. I can't stay home all day, after all, I earn money for us. Roberto nervously shuffled some papers into his briefcase, getting ready to go to the office. 
He tried not to look into his wife's eyes, knowing he was doing something wrong, but he couldn't help it. Inez was waiting for him near their home, and they had to go to the clinic for the first ultrasound today. This whole situation was getting on Roberto's nerves. Maybe take a day off just for today? Aglaya continued to insist. What kind of day off? He asked, irritated. Roberto, I'll ask someone I know to stay with me tomorrow, but I need your help today. Aglaya, I can't, he approached her closely. You understand, I have to be somewhere else. Where else? She asked again. At work, of course. Roberto didn't know where to hide himself so as not to be rude to his wife. You're really going to work? I told you, it's 10 in the morning, Wednesday. You think I have a date at this time? No, sorry, Aglaya raised her legs with her hands and tossed them onto the couch. Fine. Here, have a drink, Roberto brought her a cup of water and placed it by the couch. Thanks for caring. Just in case, he brought a huge basin and left it next to the water. Wow, that service. Aglaya said bitterly. Pass me the phone. It's in my bag. While Roberto rummaged in her bag, searching for the phone, Aglaya noticed that her photos were turned to the wall. Roberto. She called. Just a moment, I'm coming. Roberto, while I was away, did anyone come to our apartment? No, of course not. I already said I stayed home, worked. Are you sure? Aglaya pulled out a few long, light hairs from the couch cushion. Yes, yes. Fine. Is the jealousy over? I'm leaving. Wait, his wife called after him very seriously. Is she a blonde? Who? Your lover with whom you had fun here and dreamed of dividing my apartment. Are you delusional after hitting your head? I heard you, Aglaya admitted with relief. Roberto stopped halfway and froze. What did you hear? I heard you coming to visit me at the hospital with your lover and dreaming of dividing my money. Enough lying, Roberto. Are you going to her? Her husband hesitated. His nerves were so shattered that there was no point in dragging this out any longer. He sat on a chair opposite his wife. You know what? Let's get a divorce. What? I've thought a lot and decided that love is gone anyway. We've lived together for many years. Do you want everything to be like in the beginning? That won't happen. It's normal. I want to finally be happy. I think I deserve that. Roberto opened the wardrobe, selected a few warm clothes, and packed them in a suitcase. Aglaya watched it all in silence. She just couldn't believe what was happening. So, you've decided to leave right now? I'm sorry. I can't lie anymore. It's suffocating me. Let's talk, Aglaya absentmindedly suggested, realizing that there was nothing to stop him anymore. As he gathered his things on the go, her husband stepped into the corridor. She heard him putting on his shoes and opening the door. Roberto. But her only response was the sound of the door closing. The summer had been beautiful that year. There was neither suffocating heat nor heavy rains. It came in early May. Aglaya loved this time when the trees were just beginning to bloom and the air was filled with the sweet scent of lilac. Are you going to order something? Cecilia asked with a smile. She had brought her friend to sit on the cafe veranda for the first time since Aglaya returned home from the hospital. At first, she couldn't do anything by herself, but after a long, painful recovery, she finally started walking with crutches. Cecilia suggested going out for a walk. After all, the doctors allowed it, but Aglaya felt shy. She felt completely broken, exhausted, and unattractive, and didn't understand why she should show herself to people. I'll have a cappuccino, Aglaya decided. Thanks for taking me out. It's so beautiful here. Oh, but you didn't want to. Her friend chuckled. You should always listen to me. I owe you a lot, really. I could say you saved my life. Oh, come on. Seriously. 
Everything you did to get me back on my feet was simply miraculous. You're my guardian angel. All right, enough about the sad stuff. Today, we're here to enjoy ourselves. Come on, let's break free from your depression. The waiter placed two cups of coffee on the table. Aglaya immediately took hers and took the first sip with great pleasure. There's still life, she blissfully said. Of course, there is. It's just beginning for you. You're still so young. And how successfully I dyed your hair. You look five years younger. Now I look like I was in a sanatorium, not in a coma. Now it's time to start your personal life, Cecilia said slyly. Aglaya just laughed. With this, she nodded to the crutches, I'll only start my personal life in a nursing home. Nonsense. Forget the gloomy thoughts. Straighten your back, keep smiling, and a man will fall in love with you no matter what. Besides, this is all temporary, you recover very quickly. Oh, don't jinx it. And both of them knocked on wood. Perhaps you should think about work? I'm constantly thinking about it. But who needs someone like me? Aglaya started to complain, but Cecilia interrupted her. Haven't you forgotten? Only positive thoughts. What would you like to do? It was so long ago. Come on, tell me. I won't scold you. I dreamt of opening my own nail salon, Aglaya dreamily recalled. Excellent idea. You're a nail artist, and you understand everything about it. What's stopping you? I don't have the money, she admitted. I saved up nearly a million, but had to spend a lot on medical treatment. Then, I needed to live on something. Didn't your ex-husband help at all? He just disappeared after the divorce was final. What a scoundrel. Suddenly, the waiter approached with a bottle of champagne. The girls looked at him in surprise. We didn't order that. It's a gift for you. He pointed to a handsome man in his 40s, sitting in the corner. Wow, then thank you. Open it for us right now, Cecilia rejoiced and waved to her new acquaintance. Oh, he's coming over. What? How awkward, Aglaya began to get nervous. Everything is fine, don't make things up. The man pulled a chair from the neighboring table and joined them. Ladies, how's your mood? He had a deep, calm voice and soul-piercing brown eyes. We're in a great mood, Cecilia blurted out and discreetly nudged Aglaya's elbow. Just wonderful, she supported. The man smiled at Aglaya, and Cecilia immediately felt like a third wheel. You know, I think I forgot to turn off the iron. She made up a story just in a second, bye-bye, Aglaya. Cecilia fled before her friend even managed to open her mouth. But the man was glad to stay face to face with such a beauty. My name is Iladayo. And your friend is quite amusing. I'm Aglaya, and I have no idea what happened to her all of a sudden. I'll explain to you later. Perhaps we should have some champagne? Iladayo poured a glass, looking interestedly at Aglaya. She felt flustered, but deep down, Aglaya was very flattered by the stranger's attention. He seemed cute and polite. I apologize for interrupting your meeting with your friend. But I don't like to wait when I want to act. I liked you, and I would like to invite you somewhere for a walk. A walk? Aglaya suddenly remembered her crutches. Maybe not now, she mumbled. I'll take that as a yes. A lady's phone rang. Excuse me, I have to answer this, he picked up the receiver. From his tone and the subject of the conversation, Aglaya gathered that he was a businessman dealing with something abroad. I'm very sorry, but I have to run. Do you live far away? Allow me to walk you to the bus stop. I can manage by myself, thank you. I live right there, around the corner, Aglaya blushed. Even better. I'll walk you home. Iladayo stood up, waiting for Aglaya. She thought, why not? She took her crutches and laboriously got up from the table. Iladayo silently looked at her for a couple of seconds. Well, and you didn't want me to walk you. Tell me where to go. 
He helped Aglaya down the steps to the sidewalk and supported her under the elbow, escorting her to her building. A month passed. Cecilia sat on the bed near Aglaya, giving her a leg massage prescribed by the doctor. Aglaya endured it, but sometimes winced from the excessive pressure. It still hurts here, she pointed to the joint. Then, we'll continue to work on it. No, wait. Let's not do it anymore, Aglaya grimaced. I can't bear it. Do you want to go on dates or stay at home? I want to run, Aglaya smiled. Even more reason to endure. Sit tight, be patient. I even went to courses just for you to learn this massage. I appreciate it, but it's difficult now, Aglaya clutched the pillow. Cecilia went to the bathroom and returned with a warm compress in her hands. The doctor had prescribed so many things that the whole procedure took almost an hour daily. Nevertheless, the treatment was helping a lot, as Aglaya was already attempting to walk on her own. Sometimes she didn't want to wake her friend, who occasionally stayed overnight, and would go to prepare breakfast herself. Cecilia joked that nothing motivates as much as the desire to become beautiful and healthy after parting ways with a traitor. Distract yourself from the pain, think about something good. It's easy for you to say. Tell me, for example, what's going on with that guy from the cafe? Everything is fine, Aglaya smiled stupidly but then immediately screamed in pain. And in more detail? What's your current relationship with him? He's really nice. But I don't know where we stand. Do you like him? Aglaya nodded vigorously. I knew you would hit it off. I even left you two alone by not finishing my coffee. Come on, tell me more. Well, what's there to tell? Iladio is good and kind. He's never been married. He says he hasn't met that one in only all these years, but now, apparently, he has. He suggested we live together. Wow. How long have you known each other? Not more than a month? That's why I'm not rushing. But overall, it's amazing that my disability didn't scare him away. You can say that again, disability, Cecilia applied the compress to the other leg, and Aglaya moaned in pain. He's lucky to have met you. There's something that worries me. I don't even know how to say it. He offered me money. For what? Cecilia's eyes widened, and the compress even fell from her hands. No, nothing like that. He found out that I dreamed of having my own salon and offered me money. Did you take it? I feel uncomfortable about it, Aglaya shivered. Take it. When else will you be offered free money? He runs his own business and promised to help me. But I'm really nervous about it. So be it then. If you won't take it, I will. And if you need a magical push, here it is. I saw your ex with his new girlfriend. Aglaya sat up, no longer noticing any pain. Where? In the city center. They were strolling there. It looks like she's pregnant. Hey, I didn't think it would upset you this much. But I can't lie to you, right? Better the bitter truth. You did the right thing, Aglaya praised her, wiping away a tear. You know what, I'll take the money and open my own salon. Congratulations. It's what you've always dreamed of. Iladio looked into Aglaya's joyful eyes. She stepped into the empty space, which would soon become her own nail salon. I could never have even dreamed of this. The premises were located in the city center, opposite a picturesque park. The area was fantastic. Many residential buildings, good foot traffic, and close proximity to the metro. The previous owners even offered a discount due to the urgency of the deal. There couldn't have been a better option. Here, we'll place the manicure tables, and there will be a waxing area, Aglaya walked around, giving instructions to the designers. Don't forget about your own office. It should be large and beautiful, Iladayo playfully reminded her. My office? Why? You're not planning to do manicures yourself? I wanted to, Aglaya naively replied. No, that won't work. You need to manage the business, and believe me, it takes a lot of time. 
I can't even imagine how to do that. I'll teach you everything, Eladio patted her head. Make a separate office here. Hang all your diplomas and client reviews, he told the designers. What would I do without you? She hugged her benefactor. I'm surprised you didn't do this earlier. You're talented. The designers started taking measurements while Eladio opened his laptop. He drafted a business plan to help Aglaya smoothly integrate into the process. It was overwhelming for her. According to my calculations, the profit will be around 50000 per month, he pointed to the data on the table. Great. Then I'll quickly repay your loan. What? He turned around in confusion. It's not a loan, it's a gift. I don't want anything in return. Iladio, but I can't do that. I can't just take your money. You can. Turn it into even more money. It's what you dreamed of. Consider it my birthday gift to you, well in advance, he hugged Aglaya and kissed her on the cheek. Have you come up with a name yet? No. Let's just call it Nail Salon. Name it after yourself, Aglaya. How presumptuous, Aglaya chuckled and kissed Eladio back. I am the happiest woman in the world, she whispered softly. And I am the happiest man, Eladio lovingly looked at her. On her day off, Aglaya decided to spend some time at home, even though the company's affairs demanded a bit of work. She sat on the couch, with relief crossing her legs. Despite the challenging rehabilitation process, it was bearing fruit. During her last visit to the doctor, Aglaya heard for the first time that she would most likely be able to walk normally. Until now, crutches were her constant companions, but luckily, she was now completely independent and didn't need any external assistance. Last week, she even went to the pool for the first time, as it was recommended to aid in the healing of her ligaments. Aglaya was checking her new website when suddenly someone knocked on the door. Coming, wait a moment, she quickly grabbed her crutches and reached the door in a few steps. Is it a delivery? In response, the knocking became more insistent. Aglaya opened the door and raised her eyebrows in surprise. Before her stood Roberto. Hi, how are you? Her ex-husband asked. Can I come in? Hi, I didn't expect you. So, are we going to stand here all day? Well, come in, what's the matter? Something happened. Roberto knelt down to untie his shoelaces. Can I have some water? Sure, help yourself. So, what's the matter? You have a nice place here, sunny and quiet. Ah, it's been a while since I've been in such silence at home. This is not your home, Aglaya remarked coldly. So, what's the matter? To put it bluntly, my girlfriend is pregnant. I know that. Not with my child, he leaned back on the couch, waiting for her sympathy. Sorry, what? Can you believe it? It's not my child. She deceived me. Roberto spoke as if he were recounting an incredibly interesting story. I just wanted to clarify, how is this related to me? Aglaya was surprised. It's directly related. She deceived me and made me leave you. Ah, uh, so you're the victim here? Aglaya, leaning on her crutch, gathered the scattered documents and put them on the coffee table. Roberto couldn't take his eyes off her. Wow. You already have a job? He noticed the papers. You could say that but not exactly. Do you have a side job? That's great. I have my own business. Remember how you didn't believe I could manage a salon? Well, I'm opening my second one in the city center. No way. Roberto looked at his ex-wife with an open mouth. Who was this woman he used to know so well? She seemed even more attractive to him than she was at their first meeting. If you've said all you wanted, you can leave. I still have things to do today. I thought you'd be happy to see me. I won't deny it. It was a surprise, though hardly a pleasant one. You know, I would leave, but I have nowhere to go. Roberto settled more comfortably on the couch. I'm sorry to hear that, but there is nothing I can do to help. How about if you agree to let me stay until I find a new place? 
I don't expect you to let me live here. You are right not to expect that. What have I done to you that you hate me so much? He suddenly flared up. You left me here alone to die and went to your lover. You wanted me to die and you too would share my apartment and my money. Isn't that enough? I told you clearly she deceived me. I didn't want to hurt you. She did. But Inez is in the past now. You are the one in the past. Leave. Aglaya, please Roberto took her hand. I have nowhere else to go. There was such a scandal there that going back is definitely not an option. I'll find an apartment and leave right away. Three days will be enough for you? Yes, thank you. I knew you'd understand. Do we have anything for lunch? Roberto made his way to the kitchen and started opening the pans. Oh, cutlets. Within a minute, Aglaya regretted her decision to have pity on him and not kick him out of the house. But her kind soul couldn't let her ex-husband spend the night at the train station or on the street. Let him stay for a few days, and her conscience would be clear. Aglaya woke up first, even a bit earlier than the alarm clock. It was already the third night she slept on the couch because she didn't want to share a bed with her ex-husband. She was angry with him, but she knew him too well. Of course, he would succumb to any influence, and a smart, cunning woman could easily manipulate him. Would that justify his despicable actions? Aglaev could partly forgive him, but it would take years to rebuild their relationship. She went into the bedroom where Roberto was still snoring, stretched out on the whole bed. Aglaya remembered their honeymoon period. The first night when she escaped from his snoring to sleep on the couch and involuntarily smiled. How long would he stay here? Was he really looking for an apartment or was it just an excuse to stay with her? Her phone vibrated. Hello, Eladio. Good morning, dear. Didn't want to wake you up. I've been up for a while. Today, I want to come to the salon earlier. I was passing by and decided to visit you. Hope you don't mind? Of course not. I'm just glad to see you before a crazy workday. As soon as Aglaya hung up, the doorbell rang. At that moment, she realized how it would look if Eladio saw her ex-husband in her bed. What to do? It was too late to wake him up and ask him to hide. She could only hope that her beloved wouldn't doubt her loyalty. She gently opened the door. Eladio stood there with a bouquet. Good morning. This is for you. Thank you. What a lovely morning. Won't you invite me in? Yes, of course. Aglaya opened the door and used her crutch to push Roberto's shoes under the cabinet. I dropped by for a reason. And you said you were just passing by, Aglaya smiled. I have excellent news. Things are going so well with your salon that I wanted to suggest opening a few more in other cities. How do you feel about expanding? That's wonderful, Iladio. Aglaya hugged him. I couldn't have done it without you. Nonsense. You are very smart and strong. I'm just giving a little guidance. Iladio hugged her and glanced at the coat rack where an unfamiliar men's jacket hung. What's this? Where? That's definitely not mine. Have you started wearing men's clothes? Oh, that, Aglaya hastily thought of what to say. I just got confused and bought a men's jacket by mistake. I see, Iladio looked at her with suspicion. I won't create a jealousy scene, but I'll remember this for the future. It's just a silly mistake, don't even think about it. I was at the store and got the size wrong. That's why it looks like a men's jacket. Well, as long as you feel comfortable in it. Please, pour me some coffee, and I'll be off. I have a meeting at nine. Oh, I haven't made coffee yet. There's a nice cafe downstairs. Shall we go down and sit there for about 20 minutes? No, I don't want to bother you. Then just a glass of warm water. It's raining today, and I got cold while coming here. Aglaya went to the kitchen while Eladio settled into a chair and stared at the coffee table. There were two glasses, two plates, and traces of ash on it. 
Aglaya, do you smoke? Without taking his eyes off the table, he asked. No, why are you asking? Just curious. Was someone here yesterday? No, I came back home late and went straight to bed. Why these suspicions? Ah, uh, I see. Someone was here yesterday, and this someone is still here. Before Aglaya could object, Iladio rushed into the bedroom and found Roberto sleeping in just his underwear. He clenched his fists in frustration. Aglaya, limping, approached him and closed the bedroom door. This is not what you think. Who is this? He has nowhere else to go. And I slept on the couch. I asked you, who is this? He's my ex-husband. Ah, the one who left you alone, and you swore you wouldn't forgive him for the rest of your life? Well, yes, it's just such a situation. I didn't expect this from you. Iladio headed towards the exit. He tried to open the door, but his nerves made his fingers uncooperative. Don't contact me anymore. I don't want to know you. Please, let me explain everything. You can keep the business to yourself. I'm not like your husband. I have at least a little dignity. He slammed the door so loudly that the windows rattled. Aglaya sat on a stool and cried. Why are you making such a fuss so early in the morning? A sleepy Roberto appeared from the room. It's all because of you. Aglaya yelled. Why did you even come here? Quiet, I just woke up. I'm not involved in any of this. What happened? Iladio, my man, saw you, and he thought that we... Oh, that. Nonsense, Roberto headed to the bathroom. He'll come back. And if he doesn't, then he's a fool because he left such a woman. I think he was really angry. Aglaya, what if I become your man? Unexpectedly calmly suggested Roberto. What? Aglaya looked at her ex-husband through tears. Seriously? Let's try again. No way. I can't trust you anymore. How do I know you don't have another mistress? No more mistresses, I promise. Why do you need men who come and go? You're already over 30. Can I stay here for a week? You can decide if you want everything back. Wasn't it good for us together? Sometimes it was very good, Aglaya smiled tenderly at the memories. In the bathroom, the water started running. And she still sat in the hallway. Did she love Iladio? He was like a close friend she could rely on. He was good, kind, caring, but now it seemed like he wouldn't agree to build a relationship with her. Did she love Roberto? A long time ago, certainly. He was the dearest person to her for several long years. They had a shared history, and they understood each other without words. But the big question for her was, could she ever trust him again? Aglaya loved to cook. She was best at Italian cuisine, spaghetti, homemade sauces, desserts. She decided to make something special that evening to please Roberto. Good evening. I'm home. The door in the hallway closed with a lock. Roberto walked through the corridor. It smells delicious in here. I tried my best, Aglaya smiled with satisfaction. She loved it when such a picky person, like her ex-husband, praised her culinary skills. I'll just wash my hands and join you at the table. I'm very hungry. Aglaya served lasagna decorated with grated cheese on the plates. She learned the recipe from her mother, who learned it from an Italian friend. Since then, this dish has been a secret weapon for women in their family. No man could resist it. Roberto sat down at the table. Wow! He exclaimed in admiration. Do you like it? Of course. He started eating with appetite. Aglaya poured herself some coffee and enjoyed the sight. I'm glad you like it. I barely managed to cook after work. How's everything at the salon? It's okay. I'm managing. Although I've been getting really tired lately. Why aren't you eating yourself? I think I'm so tired that I can't eat. I'll fall asleep any moment. 
Roberto quickly finished eating and asked for more. We'll watch a movie now and then go to bed. It was a tough day. The suppliers postponed the deadlines again. There weren't enough appointments for all the clients, and that scandalous customer found something else to be dissatisfied with. Aglaya was glad she was doing what she loved. Despite all the difficulties, she improved every day and grew as a professional. I've finished everything, Aglaya. Roberto waved his hand in front of her face. Sorry. I think I dozed off for a moment. Go to bed. I'll just quickly take a shower, and then I'll join you. Exhausted, Aglaya collapsed on the bed, closing her eyes. Her slumber was interrupted by a vibrating phone. She was certain she left her phone in her bag. Roberto, someone's calling you, she said. Roberto. He was still in the shower. Aglaya lazily got up and checked the phone screen. It was some girl calling. She didn't pay much attention to it. Roberto swore he wouldn't cheat on her or sleep with anyone else. Probably just a work-related call. The sound of running water stopped, and soon the ex-husband appeared in the bedroom, dressed only in a bath towel. Someone called you. Really? Let's see who's bothering me so late in the evening. He dialed the number and sat on the bed. Aglaya felt relieved. If he didn't leave the room to talk, then he definitely wasn't cheating. Hey, what happened? Oh, try checking the circuit breaker. Maybe the fuse is tripped. Yes, everything is fine for tomorrow. See you. He hung up. Something about the call struck Aglaya as suspicious. The tone of his voice or the topic of the conversation. What colleague would call to complain about a power outage? More likely, a girl would call her boyfriend. Sleepiness was replaced by alertness. Who was it? Aglaya asked. Oh, just an acquaintance, Roberto nonchalantly replied. What did she want? She's having some problems with electricity. She called to ask for advice. Why would she call you? Aglaya, are you jealous? I swear to you, I'm not sleeping with anyone else. Seriously, why did she call you? And why at night? Stop it. Roberto got under the blanket next to her, but seeing the disapproving look from his wife, he didn't dare to embrace her. I've known this person for a long time. We're like best friends, you know? I've known you for many years, and I've never heard of such a friend. Who is she? Where are you planning to go tomorrow? It's Inez. Roberto helplessly sat on the bed, but there's nothing between us anymore. You still keep in touch with her? Why? You see, Aglaya, she's having financial problems now, and she has nowhere to live. She asked for my help to get a mortgage. This was long ago when we lived together. I promised to help her with that. Are you out of your mind? What's wrong again? He turned irritably. I'm just helping her, doing what I promised. You took a loan for another woman. That's worse than if you were dating her again. If you're not ready to know the truth, then why ask me? I didn't do anything wrong. I just fulfilled my promise. We're going to the bank tomorrow to arrange the documents. If you do that, don't bother coming back here. Aglaya turned to face the wall. She needs help. She's pregnant, without a husband, and can't work right now, you hear? Aglaya quietly cried. It hurt her so much and felt so hurtful that he cared for someone else. He never cared for her, he left her in a wheelchair and didn't think about how she would make a living. This hurt even more than if he had cheated. She took a pillow and went to sleep on the couch, and in the morning, she silently showed her ex-husband out the door. Roberto tried to resist, but Aglaya was determined. She didn't want to go back to the past. It was better to be alone than with such a scoundrel, even if she had loved him madly before. Thank you. No need for change, Aglaya got out of the taxi, gently closing the door. She knew how much drivers disliked it when someone slammed the door with all their might. Cecilia hurriedly followed her. A young man in a perfectly tailored black suit emerged from the car dealership, walking towards them. Glad to see you. 
You must be Aglaya? Yes. And this is Cecilia. All right. I'm Fidel. I'll be your consultant today. Please, come in, he gallantly held the door open. Inside the building were brand new, shiny, and very expensive foreign cars. A year ago, Aglaya would have been afraid to even step inside, but today she confidently walked along the rows towards the car she was interested in. Wow. Cecilia's eyes widened as she looked around. Are we really going to buy something here? It looks so elite. And why wouldn't we be elite women? You, yes. But I don't feel comfortable here. Stop it. Do you want some champagne? Can we drink here? Of course. Here you go. There were glasses filled with champagne on a table near the entrance. Fidel, the manager, smiled as he handed the ladies their drinks. To make visitors feel tipsy and encourage them to buy the most expensive one. Excellent marketing move. Do you have the model I asked for in stock? Yes, of course. In two colors, blue and white. Please, lead the way. The girls walked through several rows of cars. Here you go. In front of them were two huge SUVs. Cecilia grabbed a second glass of champagne. Holy mother. Did you really earn this? What do you think? I have five salons in different cities. I can afford some small pleasures, can't I? Do you want to sit in the cabin? Fidel offered. Cecilia immediately jumped into the passenger seat. I could live here. And the smell of leather. It's very spacious, that's so good, Aglaya praised as she sat in the driver's seat. With my injured leg, only a car like this would be suitable for me. Would you like to take it for a test drive? Are you saying we can actually take it for a spin? Cecilia squealed with joy. You can say that, the consultant smiled. Of course, we'd love to. That's for sure. He handed the keys to Aglaya. The engine started unusually quietly, sending pleasant vibrations throughout the cabin. Everything in this car looked and felt very luxurious. But Aglaya felt like she belonged in it. They drove out of the dealership. Where can we go? You can take it on the road and do a circle, Fidel suggested from the back seat. Oh, that's so cool. Cecilia rolled down the window and stuck her hand out. It drives wonderfully. Smooth as silk, Aglaya complimented. It's so easy to handle. This is the latest model, Fidel boasted. You know what? We'll take it. Really? Cecilia looked excitedly at her friend. Yes, we like it. Yes, let's drive straight home with it. You can't just drive it home, Fidel became concerned. You need to return to the dealership to finalize the purchase. How will you be paying? Will you take a loan? No, I have the full amount. I'll transfer it to your account. Congratulations on your purchase. If it's not a secret, where did you get so much money from? Fidel curiously asked. Is your husband some wealthy businessman? Oh, if I were to tell you who her husband is, Cecilia interrupted, slightly tipsy. I'm my own husband, Aglaya said. Aglaya turned off the road and parked on the shoulder. I'm taking it. In the days leading up to the new year, the salon was fully booked. The girls rushed to get their nails done before the holidays, so Aglaya asked all available nail technicians to come out. Who's next? A technician shouted, holding a nail file in her hand. Come in, I'm available. Could I have beautiful, long nails, please? The client sat down and extended her hands to the technician. The technician immediately got to work. Aglaya was in her office, trying to deal with the accounting. Before the holidays, she needed to finish all the year-end work, which required a lot of her time. Hours of constant calculations had passed, and her brain was not working very well. Aglaya came out to the salon. What she saw delighted her. Clients crowded in the corridor, and the nail technicians were constantly changing nail polishes. 
In less than six months, her salon had become the favorite place for most young women in the city. Aglaya, can I talk to you? One of the technicians removed her mask and approached her. What's the matter? There's a client who wants to speak with you. Is she dissatisfied with something? No, she seems satisfied. All right. Invite her to my office. Aglaya returned to her office. Please come in. The manicure technician let in a short girl with a huge belly. Good afternoon. Are you the owner of this salon? Inez began politely. Yes, and not just this one. Don't take offense, but pregnant women are not recommended to get their nails done. I wasn't planning to. My name is Inez. I, well, your husband left me. Aglaya was taken aback by the unexpected revelation and didn't immediately know how to respond. They both sat silently for a few seconds. So, you came to complain to me about your lover? Aglaya blurted out, barely concealing her irritation. Not exactly. I just hoped that as women, we would understand each other. Especially since we were both deceived by the same person. No matter what illusions you might have, I have to tell you that this very person was at my house recently and claimed that you had deceived him and that you were pregnant with another man's child. Lies. Inez jumped up, but quickly calmed down. He's the father of my child. I don't know what he told you about me. It's strange, but that's your business. I don't want to meddle in it. Aglaya, you see. Aglaya crossed her arms over her chest. Well, this is quite interesting. What could this unfortunate woman possibly want? Yes. Aglaya, I have nothing to live on. I've moved, I'm not working right now, and I'll be a mother soon. Get to the point, please. I need some money. I understand that it's absurd to ask the ex-wife of your man, but I really have nowhere else to go. Inez looked as though she was trying to hold back tears. Aglaya felt skeptical about every word she said. Was it hard for her to come here and ask for help from the woman she once tried to kill? Undoubtedly. Did she hope to get assistance? Yes, quite likely. She genuinely felt like a victim in this whole story and was willing to do anything for a decent life for herself and her child. Inez, do you hear yourself? First, you wanted to split my inheritance, and now you've come to beg. Did Roberto really care so little about you that he allowed this? He doesn't know. We don't communicate. So, you came here to deceive me? If you don't communicate with him, then how is he paying for your mortgage? Inez looked at Aglaya in bewilderment. She didn't expect her to know so much. It seemed that Roberto had indeed been with her, and they had a very candid conversation. Realizing that her plan was foiled, Inez prepared to leave. Wait, Aglaya stopped her. Here you go. She took a bundle of bills from a drawer and tossed it onto the table. But promise me that you will really stop communicating with that scoundrel. I promise. The girl joyfully grabbed the money. Thank you. You have a big heart. Thank you. Inez tucked the money into her purse. She looked content, but Aglaya felt more and more sorry for her. She watched indifferently as her husband's lover left the manicure salon. Aglaya hadn't believed any promises for a long time. The cafe near her home had reopened its outdoor terrace, although it was still early spring. Cozy blankets were given to freezing customers. Aglaya perused the menu, even though she knew it almost by heart. Today, she treated herself to a day off and even made a small gift to herself. For the first time, she wore heels. Her doctor didn't approve of her desire to return to fancy footwear, but she couldn't resist. Sitting at the table and feeling how her foot began to ache quite severely, she almost regretted her decision. Waiter, I'd like a salad, please. Right away. A tall man entered the cafe. He chose a seat so that he was facing away from all the other customers, but Aglaya recognized him even in that position. It was Iladayo. How long had they not seen each other? Waiter. Aglaya called again. 
Please take a bottle of champagne to that gentleman over there. It's a gift from me. Of course, the young waiter deftly took a bottle from the bar and placed it on Aladio's table. He looked surprised at the waiter, who pointed at Aglaya. She waited for his reaction. It was unclear from his face whether he was angry or had already forgotten everything. He waved his hand in a friendly manner. Aglaya took her salad and moved to his table. Mind if I join you? She asked with a smile. Of course, sit down. Oh, you're in heels. I'm glad you noticed. And I congratulate you. You fully recovered. It wasn't easy. Maybe you can open the champagne? Aglaya held out her glass. The cork popped and the foam overflowed. Let's drink to our acquaintance. Absolutely. It was here, in this very cafe. More than a year has passed. It's amazing that you remembered. They drank the champagne. How are you doing? Iladio looked at Aglaya without taking his eyes off her. Everything is great. Aglaya took out a pack of cigarettes and lit one. Wow. A new bad habit? Unfortunately. What was my old bad habit? Inviting ex-lovers to your house. Iladio, Aglaya took his hand. He responded to her gesture warmly and fondly. I told you the truth. He just asked to spend the night. And I was sleeping on the couch back then. I've been thinking about that a lot. I probably acted too hastily. That's exactly what I wanted to hear from you. That you forgive me and believe me. Everything else doesn't matter anymore. I hope this misunderstanding didn't cause you too much pain. Well, I drank for only a week. He leaned closer to her. In that case, perhaps we could go somewhere tonight? Sure, Aglaya smiled. Thank you for everything, Eladio. I was really confused back then. I hoped he would come to his senses. We spent almost ten years together. And, honestly, I feel a bit uncomfortable in front of you now. You've helped me with the business, restored my faith in life. Yes, but, Eladio sighed, but you don't owe me anything anymore. And you paid off the debt. I paid off the monetary debt, but the emotional debt remains with me for now. Aglaya, I tried to forget you. I even went on a couple of dates with other women. But every time I remembered you, I left right away. I can't be without you, Aglaya. I don't know what's happening to me. I fell in love like a boy. All the women in the world are before me, and yet all my thoughts are only about you. SHH, SHH, Aglaya put her finger to Aladio's lips and kissed him. If you haven't changed your mind yet, I agree to be your wife. There's nothing tying me to my past anymore. I don't mind, Aladio whispered, just promise me you'll quit smoking. I promise, Aglaya smiled and looked at the most reliable man in the world with love in her eyes. If you're enjoying it as well, leave a like and subscribe to the channel.